ओम श्री साई राम वेलकम टू साई वर्ड्स ऑफ विजडम वन समर स्वामी वॉज इन कोडाइकनाथ ए फ्यू स्टूडेंट्स टीचर्स एंड डिवोटीज अकम्पनेड हिम वन मॉर्निंग स्वामी टोल्ड ऑल ऑफ देम हु एवर आंसर्स माई क्वेश्चन करेक्टली आई विल रिवॉर्ड हिम विथ ए स्पेशल गिफ्ट on hearing this everyone especially the students got very excited swami then asked who am i who am i most of the students answered loudly in one voice god swami replied not correct one student said shiva shakti swarupa swami not said not correct the second student shri krishna has incarnated again swami laughed and said not correct another student said sarva devata swarupa swami once again replied not correct finally everyone told him swami please tell us who you are swami answered i am i i am i initially everyone burst into laughter but as swami started explaining in a serious tone there was pin drop silence swami explained i is the basis of everything when you say i am this or i am that a feeling of dwaita duality is expressed i am i expresses a dwaita non duality i am recognized by many names such as god atma brahman shri krishna shri rama shiva allah and jesus but this iness of advaita is the ultimate truth swami's teachings reflect the essence of all knowledge one of the many devotees of swami is the world famous cricketer shri sunil gavaskar Since 1970 the Gavaskar family has been devotees of Baba but Sunil visited Prashantalayam for the first time only in 1982 after blessing him with an interview Swami took him to the boys hostel all the students had gathered in the prayer hall Swami made Sunil sit next to him and said to him today is Bakreed So tell the students about the importance of this festival. Sunil replied, "Swami, I have no knowledge about Islam, Quran, or Bakrid. How can I speak about it?" Swami told him, "You just stand in front of the mic. Everything will be all right." Sunil obeyed Swami's directive, and he spoke on Islam and Bakrid for about twelve minutes. His speech drew a loud applause. As he returned to his seat, Swami said, "Didn't I tell you that you will be able to speak?" Sunil only folded his hands in reverence to Swami. Today, after so many years, Sunil, in wonder, says, "I really don't remember anything that I spoke. It was Swami who spoke through me." That's what. Sunil Gavaskar said on 23rd November 1926 Shiva Shakti Swarupa Bhagwan Sri Sat Sai Baba incarnated on earth on the very next day Yogi Arabindo announced in his ashram yesterday Lord Sri Krishna himself has incarnated on earth in human form he will lead all of humanity on the righteous path in this mortal land this power will light the atma jyoti in each and every heart his voice will reach the ears of millions today god has incarnated on earth thousands of years ago the sages bhrugu agastya vasishta and shukamuni have written in great detail 
about Bhagwan Baba's advent in their respective Nadi Grandhas. In 1957, after the conclusion of the Divine Life Convention held at Venkatagiri, Swami Sachidananda declared, Sri Satsai Baba is omnipresent, omnipotent and omniscient. He is the Atma that dwells in every living being and is the embodiment of truth, awareness and bliss. Swami Shivananda of Rushikesh and Sri Mahapurushji have accepted the supremacy of Bhagavan Baba. Swami Charmayananda, Swami Amrutananda, who is the disciple of Ramana Maharshi, Sri Godavari Mata of Sakori, Sri Devi Thai have all expressed reverential feelings about Bhagavan Baba's greatness and divinity. The great Yogi Raj, Parama Puja, Niya, Gagangiri Maharaj has spoken about Yogeshwar Sri Satsai Baba as follows. In our country, from the Himalayas to Kanyakumari, there are many secret places where many sadhus and yogis have been engrossed in severe penance over thousands of years. Even if you collect all their yoga, samarjya, the spiritual yogic power, it will pale in front of Sri Satsai's effulgence. Devra Baba, whose physical age is over 400 years, resides at Tirdha Raj Prayaga, in a sacred spot where all the three sacred rivers, Ganga, Yamuna and Saraswati merge. He has expressed, Bhagavan Baba is Lord Shiva himself. He is Parabrahma Sarupa, the well-known author of the world-famous book, Yogi Kadhamrata. Swami Paramahamsa Yogananda has said, God has incarnated on earth in South India and is well known by the name Sai Baba. In the same Yogi Kadhamrata, there is a reference to Mahavatar Baba or Babaji, whose age is over a thousand years. He says, I am familiar with all the three Shiva incarnations. I heard Darshan Sri Sai. I take Darshan the present incarnation, Sri Satya Sai. I also know about the future Prema Sai Avatar. In this way, millions of devotees from all over the world are fortunate to be blessed with the Darshan of Yogeshwar Bhagwan Sri Satsai Baba, who is the Lord of all yogis. Well, when Paramapuja, Asharam Bapuji, went for Bhagwan Baba's Darshan in September 2004, he said, Bhagwan Baba is Lord Krishna himself. Many known and unknown yogis have uttered similar words about Swami. Bhagavan Baba says, the celestial beings from the Devaloka are also yearning for my darshan. An incident which illustrates the truth of this statement was witnessed by one of Swami's ardent devotees, Sri Raja Reddy. This happened quite a few years ago. It was Vaikuntha Ekadasi, a day of exceptional sanctity. It is described as a glorious day where Lord Sri Mahavishnu gives darshan to his devotees at the northern gate of his celestial abode, Vaikuntha. On that night, Sri Rajareti was sleeping on the veranda on the first floor of Prashantilayam. At about midnight, he woke up. He noticed through the slightly open door of Swami's room an effulgent illumination. Being curious, he drew closer and peeped through the gap between the doors. He was astonished at what he saw. Several celestial beings were taking turns to bow down 
in reverence at the divine lotus feet of Bhagwan Baba. Swami was reclining on the bed and accepting their homage. Seven effulgent masses of bright light were seen around Swami's bed. The vision startled the Raja Reddy. He quickly closed the door and went back to his bed on the veranda, totally stunned. Next day, he inquired with Swami about this heavenly experience. Swami explained, they are all celestial beings, devatas, that come for my darshan. What you saw as the seven masses of bright light were the Sapta Rishis, the seven great Rishis. As I protect you with my blessings, you are still alive. Otherwise, the moment you set your eyes on that scene, you would have been reduced to ashes. Just this one incident alone is enough to reveal Swami's glory. Many great personalities representing different faiths honored Swami. In 1968, there was a pair named Haji Baba. There was a pair named Haji Baba who lived in Nairobi. At that time, he was 92 years old. He was known to have performed many miracles, such as controlling the five elements, healing the sick from incurable diseases. He used to say, my area of work is limited to Karachi, East Africa, United Kingdom, and few other countries. But Bhagwan Sri Satsai Baba works for the entire world. There are no limits to his work. When he said this about Swami, it was the 42nd year of Baba's advent. Today, in the 82nd year of the advent of this Yugavatar, we find that every word spoken by the peer has come true. That's what Bhagavan Baba is. Swami says that he has incarnated on earth only for the upliftment of all mankind and true to his word, is constantly engaged in overseeing that each one's life is sanctified and filled with auspiciousness. The story of the world-famous vocalist, Srimati M. S. Subhanakshmi tells us about the Mangala Karaya Rupa of Bhagavan Baba. Srimati Subhanakshmi was well known world over. Suswara Lakshmi, right from Cheyu, she had offered her devotion to God through Nata Upasana and she has accepted this path to lead her to liberation. The dear readers will be surprised to know that this well-known singer's life was full of calamity and misfortunes. May this was one reason for her music being full of Bhakti Rasa. When she embarked upon her career, she had enacted the role of Mirabai in a movie. Her melodious voice and gifted acting abilities were lauded in this role. Then onwards, until her last moment, she only sang devotional songs. She donated all her earnings to charitable institutions and led a saintly life. Srimati M. S. Subhalakshmi was blessed with Swami's first darshan in 1975 at Brindavan, with tearful eyes and intense devotion, she bowed down in reverence and placed her head on Swami's lotus feet. Swami said to her, Come, since the past ten years you have been waiting for this Padravaskar, take it now. Why did Swami say this? Ten years prior to this, Srimati Subhalakshmi heard about Swami's divinity from one of her friends, but her husband, Sri Sadasivam, was not ready to believe in Swami. Just like other noble ladies, she did not go anywhere without her husband's permission or his company. She therefore requested this friend to offer pranams to Swami on her behalf and bring prasadam for her. 
when her friend told this to Swami, he said, I know her husband Sadashivam is not ready to come here, but one day he will come. Saying so, he gave prasadam for Subhalakshmi. As per Swami's words, that day dawned after ten long years, and finally, Srimati Subhalakshmi and her husband arrived for Swami's darshan. During this time, she was passing through the most arduous phase of her life. Swami gave her Padra Namaskar and also blessed her with an interview. After coming out of the interview room, Srimati Subhalakshmi said, I have been privileged to receive the bliss of Swami Darshan in person only as a reward of my penance of several years. The couple were recipients of this bliss several times at Prashantalayam, Vrindavan and Sundaram. Subhalakshmi recorded several bhajans of Swami in her golden voice. She also lent her voice to record a lyric Sai Ram Chiluka, which was composed by Swami himself. Swami showered his boundless grace on her several times. In 1982, her daughter was seriously ill. At that time, Swami kept both of them in his divine presence at Brindavan for over a month. When Subhalakshmi was asked the question, how did you become a devotee of Swami? With humility she replied, people speak about Swami's glory and how he rescues the devotees from calamities. But as far as I am concerned, his biggest miracle is the one. When he casts his loving and compassionate glance at you, and you experience a peace which is indescribable. There is a sense of security one experiences in his presence, and besides that, one realizes the truth through his words, each of which is a sacred mantra. I feel that during Kali Yuga, Lord Sri Krishna has incarnated on earth to protect the people. We are really fortunate to be living during the time when the ever-compassionate Swami has incarnated on earth. Once a devotee of Swami was traveling from Chennai to Puttaparthi. He asked Subhalakshmi, Amma, tomorrow I am leaving for Prasantalayam. Do you want to send a message for Swami? Choked with emotion, she folded her hands before Swami's photographs in her house and said, what can I say to God? Before any desire enters my heart, he fulfills it. A few days later, she merged with God. Bhagavan Baba blessed Subhalakshmi and filled her life with auspiciousness. May he also make our lives auspicious. Is our heartfelt prayer at the lotus feet of Mangala Karaya Swami. Thank you. We'll meet later. Sai